Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sakya Pathan, President of the Philanthropy Club of India. Today, we are again back with our journey of learning and uh, spreading knowledge, awareness. And we have a very special guest today. Uh, before I introduce you to the guest, today the topic uh, is uh, something that we all are really curious about. It's uh, feline orthopedics, uh, you know, and how things work in cats. And uh, uh, I would not keep any secrets because uh, we have uh, Dr. Ramesh Jangra with us. Uh, Dr. Ramesh, good evening and very warm, warm welcome evening. from uh, uh, the whole Cat Fraternity and Feline Club of India. Um, uh, talking about Dr. Ramesh, he is a senior doctor at Cessna uh, Lifeline Veterinary Hospital, Domblore, Bangalore. Is MBSc with specialize, specialization in orthopedics and ophthalmology, uh, having a BBSc from Haryana, Haryana Agriculture University and an MBSc from Veterinary College, Bangalore. Dr. Ramesh has also pursued several advanced courses in orthopedics and ophthalmology from Germany, Australia, US to name a few countries. Dr. Ramesh was employed as a government officer, as a veterinarian surgeon in Haryana before he joined Cessna Lifeline team as a founder along with Dr. Pawan. Uh, and has been instrumental in establishing the Cephna Cessna Lifeline practice in its current form. Uh, Dr. Ramesh's uh, day at Cephna, uh, Cessna Lifeline begins with uh, rounds at the OT, followed by outpatient department, consulting uh, with clients and also advising other doctors on treatment plans uh, for pets in consultation in an emergencies uh, come through the doctors. Dr. Ramesh works on those cases as well. Um, talking about uh, the foundation of Cessna, Dr. Pawan and Dr. Ramesh have been friends since they were in class 10 and have always talked about taking veterinary medicine in India to great levels and this is what they uh, strive to achieve every single day, uh, this is what he says and uh, now I have spent my life training other, other doctors on various procedures, creating protocol when it comes to treating small animals. I also would like to work on adding more value to client experience here at Cessna. So I would say that, you know, Dr. Pawan and you have worked really hard to make a state of art facility and something that, you know, uh, uh, Indians are proud of, you know, because this kind of facility was never there in the country. So I would like to congratulate all the efforts uh, made by you, Dr. Pawan and the team, including. Uh, so uh, welcome, Dr. Ramesh. And I think this is the first time you would be talking on FCS platform. Yeah. Yeah. More means probably online, maybe second time. That's all. Yeah. It's... Yeah, and uh, online second time. I, I don't know what <laughs> kept us away for so long, uh, but I think we would be doing sessions, uh, uh, you know, with, with lesser frequency now uh, mm. and uh, uh, lesser gap. Uh, uh, Dr. Ramesh, you know, feline orthopedics, you know, something uh, I would like to start with by asking you that, you know, how the anatomy or the boning or the bone structure of cats is different than dogs? So basically, there is not difference in the bone structure, but their body, as as such body structure and their behavior makes it very di uh, different uh, orthopedic things uh, in than the than a dog because uh, dog usually cats are very agile uh, uh, cats and they are more prone to injuries uh, in these uh, these polytrauma injury because they are independent in nature and they are very curious of and everything they want to explore everything. So in that bargain, what happens? they get more injuries in terms of like a vehicle accident or fall on and bites from other cats and from dog because they try to go out and all so that's why even the if you're a, a somebody's cat also they also go out and all dog usually if somebody ha having a dog usually it, it will not go out of the house and all by its own they'll go with the uh, the owners only but cat they can go independently they can go come go and come out uh, again also so it, it's like that in terms of uh, uh, because they get more injury in terms of orthopedic and uh, only difference is in terms of the treatment part cats uh, body is very agile they they it they, their body heal faster than the dogs they can rest more uh, it's easier for them to confine in a cage than in, in a dog so in uh, in the dog when they have injuries it's difficult to confine them in one place they'll keep jumping but cat will still stay. So lots of uh, cat uh, orthopedic condition you can treat even with a simple rest only. So that is again one more dif difference in terms of the uh, treatment part for them. Only one challenge always we have as a veterinarian that cat's condition is very difficult to diagnose orthopedic condition because uh, they will not allow you to touch the uh, body so easily 
if if they are a feral cat or they are a stray cat they will not allow to touch you and then when you touch that time you need to sedate them and touch and that in that bargain you will not know the reflexes and all like if you want to see the neurological reflexes or if you want to see the whether cat is having pain uh, in somewhere we will not re realize so so it's a challenging for the cats to for the diagnosis part definitely and over over uh, one more thing is because in india we don't have in uh, every part of the india we don't have so many cats so vet also not that much used to treating cats so again when vet is seeing after uh, um, five years five cats he has seen and then you are bringing one cat in front of him he, he doesn't have any idea to how to treat it so there are lots of differences in that way also it's not the anatomically but the other issues are there which makes it difficult uh, in the feline yeah yeah that's a really good point that you know you said that uh, the post uh, operative care or post operative recovery uh, seems to be a bit more better in cats than dogs in but, cat definitely uh, yeah. as as a whole cat is a difficult animal uh, because yeah, yeah. it's a system, completely different yeah yeah it's, it's a completely difficult animal and uh, i think we'll be talking about the trauma the diagnosis approach and decision making uh, as with, with Dr. Ramesh with, on a lot of uh, different aspects. So, Dr. Ramesh, we can, uh, uh, if you can please go to the presentation. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we would be taking your questions uh, if you post on the relevant topic after the session is over. So, kindly uh, feel free to post any questions in the comment boxes and we'll try and take it at the end of the session. Okay. So, yes, please, um, please, uh, over to you. Okay, so can I start now? Yes, 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 sir. Hello, can I start now, or, sir? Yes, sir, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, hi, uh, everybody. Uh, good evening, uh, and thank you for uh, uh, calling me for this. Um, and uh, so, today we are going to uh, discuss about uh, basic uh, feline orthopedic care and mainly the trauma management because it's not the always the orthopedic problem comes when they fall and all but beside that they get uh, lots of other problems so uh, today's uh, uh, um, talk we are going to talk about how to approach these cases at home when these kind of things are happens how to approach the cats during that period of time how to handle them and how to take them to the veterinarians before that what are things needs to be done and then at vet what are the things we can expect how the vet diagnose this condition and then at the end we are going to uh, discuss about the treatment option whatever treatment option we have at home or in the hospital what are the different options available so uh, i'm going to just start with the basic part where uh, uh, why these cats gets so much of bone injuries and all or polytraumatic injuries because they are very cu curious in nature always uh, they try to explore everything they go out alone they try to fight with other cats and in that bargain they end up getting lots of injuries um, when whenever these cases happens probably uh, whether it's your cat or if you see any cat which is like a stray cat which has got the fall or the trauma or accident or some dog has beaten the cat how to approach these ca cats so always don't try to handle them directly like don't try to approach and just uh, um, uh, hold the cat directly because they can react badly they can bite you scratch you also so slowly uh, approach the cat uh, and gently uh, stroke on their head and shoulder and make them comfortable that okay you are there to help them uh, then assess the cat's vital signs like how the cat is respiration uh, respiration respiration is uh, the patterns how the cat is having whether, whether any uh, breathing difficulty is happening or any signs of bleeding especially on the if there's a head injury then most of the time there will be bleeding from the mouth and there's bleeding from the nose so those signs sign we can see avoid holding the uh, cat from the neck uh, grip or uh, scruffing uh, because in case if they have already some breathing difficulty they may have again choking possibilities there so try to hold them all over the board like the carry them from the chest area probably and uh, or sometimes even we should not uh, carry them directly also we can directly allow them to come in a cage or in a basket so that we can avoid unnecessary handling for them and usually cats tends to come uh, in the basket and all easily because uh, they they feel secure in basket or in, in any cage area once these kind of things happens for them 
try to reach nearby clinic as soon as possible or hospital if you, it's available but in case if you don't have any facility where you can directly assess to the veterinary uh, practice then uh, don't directly handle the cat more just uh, give her little time to settle down and then try to observe what are the problems associated you can uh, make the cat walk for some time in a small area where you have kept her and then see whether the cat is able to walk at least on three legs if there is another injury is there or how is her condition sometimes if there's not much injury they'll start getting better by itself only and um, once uh, we we uh, take the cat to the um, veterinarians um, um, for us also it's uh, for not every veterinarian it's easy for the uh, handle the cats orthopedic conditions or any condition because um, biggest problem is lots of times we get cats which is stray cats with the polytrauma injury so the lack of history is a major issue for us to diagnose the awareness of clinician of for orthopedic disease in cats another thing because uh, not lots of veterinarians seeing the cats very often as even in our college days also we hardly seen in five years a one or two cats for a treatment we never used to see any cats so most of people are not exposed to the cat treatment itself only um, each clinic is having very small number of cats patients also that's another reason which is making it difficult sometimes to treat the cats uh, difficulty in proper examination of cat i has already earlier told that the cats when they are already traumatized when they have already pain lots of pain in the different part of the body they will not allow to uh, examine especially the stray cat or feral cats so again these are challenges for veterinarian also why uh, it's difficult to uh, take care of these cases so how usually um, normally we approach these cases so these cases will be having lots of uh, other injuries apart from the orthopedic injury and orthopedic injury most of the time those injuries are not life threatening but other injuries uh, like if the dog cat is fallen from the height um, almost 70 percent cases there will be a lung bleeding because of the um, impact on the lungs and there will be uh, impact on the um, liver also so abdominal thoracic injuries are very common when they come with the uh, any accident case or any dog bite case or any fall cases so normally when the cases comes to us we try to uh, emphasize on more of their vital organs rather than directly jumping into the orthopedic condition where the client is saying that there's a there's a breakage in the leg and also first we assess the uh, cat completely see whether the cat is having any emergency situation where we can we have to treat those conditions first and then think of orthopedic condition so it's important to find out uh, with the different diagnostic means that whether the cat is um, clinically okay to go for the orthopedic examination or whether she is serious to do other things before that so once uh, the cat comes to us mostly uh, we try to diagnose and discuss with the clients the rest of things so history is very very important in these cases um, um, about the vaccination status whether if it's uh, somebody's cat uh, because most of uh, uh, vaccination is a very important step because most of these cats in stress they can get other viral infection they can catch sometimes infection from the hospital also that's possible because we get lots of other infected cats also so we need to make sure that when um, we should vaccination vaccinate our cat but in case the cats are stray cat then it's difficult the reasons for presentation we asked the owner whether um, what has happened complete uh, other um, uh, the owner has to give us the, those histories owner's observation about the cat whether cat is after the injury whether cat was able to walk on three leg or whether uh, she wasn't able to walk at all or she has walked for some time then she has fallen so those things we asked about the observations from the owners whether any breathing difficulty was there before that those things is important for us uh, then we evaluate the patient and treat in case any emergency uh, condition is there that means the apart from the orthopedic conditions uh, whether and that's again again i am emphasizing that whenever we uh, these polytrauma cases are there it's very important to see other aspect of the uh, treatment part and diagnosis doing a thorough general orthopedic and neural examinations are important in these cases to find out what are the different problems so that we can discuss uh, 
about these conditions with the owner um, thoroughly in terms of prognosis treatment. Okay, so most of the times uh, in these cases, uh, um, either sedation or anesthesia are required to examine the cat as without sedation, we can injure the cat or we can make them more stress. Lots of time if they have lung injury and if you are um, um, stressing the cat or if we are holding them with a scruff, they can choke themselves and then they, they can collapse also sometimes. So um, anyway, before giving the sedation or anesthesia, we, are, we usually check them whether they are in a position to take the sedation or anesthesia. And then we after anesthesia, when we give the anesthesia, after that we check them completely. Uh, do the diagnostic procedures um, so in that in those diagnostic process first usually we do a quick uh, abdomen scan do whole body x-ray so uh, two different view of whole body x-rays are important being uh, sometimes we miss a few things if you are taking just one x-ray so different part of the body the x-ray is very important especially in cat when they they get these polytrauma cases one basic blood test to find out whether some internal bleeding is happening or bleeding is there in the um, um, in the any other organs also. So we do all these diagnostic tests first and then we go for the uh, discussion with the client and decision making what are the treatment plans uh, we can follow. So we definitely ask first uh, owner's expectation how owners, owners want to treat the cat whether they have because some lots of cases the people come with a stray cat and they they may not be able to um, afford them that much treatment or they may not be able to keep the cat um, after uh, the treatment so we ask them all these things that okay uh, these are the injuries uh, um, there's a chest injury in a cat and there is a fracture is there the cat is right now not stable there is a uh, mild uh, trauma on the front leg whether there is a bruising on the leg uh, on the soft tissue also so we discuss with them okay see for two days we need to uh, uh, take care of the vitals first we need to uh, make sure that uh, the lung part first heals and then we need to go for surgery whether owner is okay with all the aspect or not um, clinical relevance of the uh, diagnosis whether clinically whatever diagnosis we are given whether it's related relevant to the whole uh, um, decision making for us or not whether uh, and then um, whatever diagnostics test we have done based on that whether there is any change in treatment plan whether hemoglobin has gone down because of the internal bleeding whether we need to do a blood transfusion or not so we these things we discuss and then we give the prognosis to the client okay uh, there is two things are going on there's a lung bleeding is there in this case and there is a uh, fracture in the hind leg is there so uh, we will uh, for lung bleeding if uh, most of the cats they get better with the lung bleeding within two to three days as long as their spo2 stay um, 95 or 93 to 95 uh, during that period and if they don't have any um, respiratory difficulty the cat will get better by itself only otherwise in case if they have respiratory difficulty or if we see that uh, there is any um, uh, stress while breathing and all and then we try to find out whether there's a uh, only bleeding is there or whether there's a air inside the uh, chest area so sometimes we remove the air or blood from the chest cavity and to make them feel better while uh, breathing and uh, then we discuss uh, um, like after once they are fine with the respiratory part then probably we go for the uh, surgery or putting a splint for the leg which is fractured uh, durational treatment is important to tell the clients how much time the cat is going to get better approximately we say then okay the lung part within two to three days she'll start getting better but the joint means the bone is going to take its own time to heal but we will think whether we are opting the options of splint or whether we are opting option of surgery and then of course course is uh, cost of uh, treatment is also important because some of these cases being they are stray cats so some people may not be able to afford or spend that money for them. In terms of treatment options in these cases uh, uh, include uh, ma medical management where some of these cases can get better if they are they doesn't have any bone injury and all if they have only soft tissue injury with the painkiller management with the rest they can get better faster. Uh, most of the times uh, treating other injuries apart from the 
orthopedic problem as we have already discussed we have to treat other conditions surgical management for uh, uh, any of these conditions is another option with with us uh, most of the uh, orthopedic conditions cats need uh, surgical intervention for a better outcome they can get better with the other mean also but if we want a better outcome of these con these conditions then definitely they need uh, surgical intervention most of the times just this is a uh, small uh, presentation how um, when the uh, this is a study done by um, one hospital where they have seen that when the cases come with a polytrauma almost uh, more than 70 percent cases they get uh, thoracic injury chest injury almost uh, 43 percent cases they get abdominal cavity injury and fractures are not it's high but it's not too high the uh, spinal injuries are also very common and other soft tissue injuries so to see this uh, um, graph you can see that it's not that only orth orthopedic problems are major problems when they get uh, injuries but the other issues also has to be tackled simultaneously before uh, going for the orthopedic treatment okay now the basic part where uh, we are uh, going to discuss about some basic uh, of uh, ortho orthopedic problem where the fractures how to deal with the fractures so these bandaging or splinting the cat's uh, um, leg is not recommended frequently in cats as this is associated with a poor outcome and other complications uh, in terms of other complications because normally cats they don't like anything on their body being they groom themselves uh, frequently so they don't like anything on their body and in that uh, bargain uh, normally they they get lots of skin issues and all with the splint and being their skin is so soft sometimes they get skin necrosis also and whenever we are putting all these uh, splints and all the splint has to be changed every week and when we are changing these splints every week there is always you need to give either deep sedation or anesthesia to cat every and these being you have to change every week for five to six times so every time you need end up getting giving them anesthesia also so there are some um, um, complications are there or drawbacks are there for these uh, um, splints and all and these splints can't be put everywhere in the body there are some bones where you can't treat uh, these fractures with the splints so uh, so splints can uh, be a option of the treatment when uh, there is an injury uh, i'll just show you the next slide probably i can show you so um, these are the bones lower um, limb bones are uh, these areas you can still uh, treat with the splints especially the radius ulna and lower bone so if there's any breakage in this bone or this bone um, we can still treat the cat with the uh, splint but there should not be any displacement of the bone bone should be on the place only if they are overriding each other then again it's difficult to treat with the splint the surgical option is better in those cases um, in back leg um, the tibia and fibula can be treated sometimes especially if the cat is less than six months still you we have option of treating them with a splint because uh, when the cat is less than six months the healing can take place within three weeks so within three weeks we can remove the cast also but if the cat is adult cat who has got any injury to these areas also still we recommend more surgery because in adult cats it may need approximately four to six weeks for the bone to heal so keeping a cast in the cat for four to six weeks uh, it's uh, very difficult uh, so uh, i always recommend because when we do surgeries for all these uh, uh, conditions uh, we don't keep any cast for them we we directly um, allow the cat to walk on the second or third day itself only they can use their legs uh, when we do the surgery there won't be any cast on the leg there will be a soft bandaging or for one or two days to avoid the uh, any of the swelling post operative swelling but they can do pretty well with the surgical intervention but yeah uh, there are cases where we don't have option of surgery or where where the owner is not able to afford or the vet is not having full equipment for the orthopedic surgery then probably the splint is best but avoid splint putting splint in the upper bone this bone upper bone in this area this area and splint will never work in case if the fracture is 
near the any of the joint if joint is affected in these areas this area this area and the stifle joint if these areas are affected uh, inside the joint if there is a fracture uh, surgery is the only answer the splint is not going to help in that splint will help if the long bone from the center it breaks or there is a fracture so it's important to know that which are the cases can be uh, treated with the with the surgery and uh, which are the cases can be managed with the uh, with the uh, uh, splint and all and uh, um, some cases uh, where there is a problem with the scapula or there is a problem with the pelvic area these cases we can manage even with the case rest only you do the case rest for two weeks to three weeks and cat will start walking with the of in the in case of there's a upper area fracture in the scapula or there's a fracture in the pelvic bone and all they may do well with the rest itself only so um, different options are available in in terms of surgery for the cats uh, normally we do uh, intramedullary pinning uh, a, we put a pin to stabilize the um, bone then external fixators there's a out, we put the pins inside the bone and they project out and from outside we support them bone plating is another options intramedullary pinning with the plating uh, there are another process nowadays we do here is uh, minimal minimally invasive plate osteosynthesis mepo this technique we do with the minimum invasive technique where we open the skin very small area and do the fracture repair through that only and for the um, vertebral fractures for the spinal fractures cases we do pedicle screw stabilization which is helping a lot nowadays to us also so i'm going to show you a few of the uh, slides where we have done these surgeries and all so uh, this is a cat which has got uh, this area injury there's a uh, sacroiliac uh, luxation in this area and if uh, in this case we have put a screw with the minimum invasive technique where with the one small hole only we have put this screw under a fluoroscopy but this case this cat can walk without this surgery also so with the surgery cat will start walking second day onwards they do so well that second day the cat can walk on this leg but this cat if you keep this cat in a cage rest for two weeks this cat will do almost 90 percent normal they may not be 100 percent but this cat can do up to 90 percent without surgery also being the displacement is not too much they can do better so like this uh, there are different opinion when we discuss with the client whether they want to go for surgery or they don't want to go for surgery i can give them different uh, options also during the, these uh, while discussing these things um this is a case where uh, there's a fracture in the tibia and this case we have done a uh, pin this is a pinning process where we put a pin through this area and uh, being this is an oblique fracture, we have put three different wires also. There were three pieces in this case and we have stabilized with this. So uh, in these cases, uh, the uh, possibility cases are very easy because uh, there, we haven't opened these cases too much and we have done the surgery. So they can also start walking second to third day onwards. If this is an adult cat, but in this case, if this cat is a kitten of, uh, uh, this is a kitten of, uh, like maybe three to four months of age these fractures because they're not much displacement of bone can be managed with the splint also so with a simple soft bandaging with a splint this fracture can heal within three weeks in a young cat but being this cat was an adult cat we have to go for surgery because then it's very difficult for the healing process to happen in an adult cat it takes long time so these are different uh, while uh, discussing with the uh, with the client uh, okay so this is a case this is a um, uh, young cat which who has got two fractures in the pelvic uh, pelvis area and we have rectified with the two plates so both the side we have put the plates and we have rectified that in this case also in case if uh, the owner doesn't have any option of surgical at all these cases also can walk after four to six weeks uh, despite of the bad fractures so pelvic fracture can do only complication happen in these cases that the area in between uh, the pelvis which 
helps for the motion and all for there's a rectum is there in that area and the urethra and all sometimes there will be damage to those area then it's difficult uh, for the cat to manage if cat is able to poop and pee uh, with this kind of fracture also they can heal uh, without surgical intervention but in this case definitely surgery is a like must kind of thing but still if you don't have any option then probably you can think of giving the rest and then take care of the um, vitals and all physiological of the cat like their urination motion because initially they may not be able to pass the motion by themselves or urine by themselves so the other complication if you can take care still they can do well with these things um, these are the pedicle screws uh, we use uh, these things quite a bit because nowadays we are getting lots of cases of spinal fracture so there's a spinal fracture here we have stabilized with these pedicle screws and uh, these cases they do this cat was walking on third day despite of this bad fracture also in the in the spine area so it's in the veterinary also we have lots of things which can be done now which we never used to do but now we have option of trying to treat everything uh, definitely in these cases we give the prognosis to the client where there is possibility despite of uh, the surgery also uh, there is possibility that cat may not be able to walk completely and all but some cases they do pretty well but it's all depends upon case to case before uh, surgery of these cases we do a complete neurological uh, examination we do a ct scan because we have in-house ct scan also so we do ct scan we plan this this discuss with the client the prognosis and then we go for the these kind of surgeries so this is a minimum uh, minimally invasive procedure where um, um, we do a small cut on upper and lower portion of the bone and just slide the uh, plate inside and do the uh, so this kind of surgery where the post care is minimum they do pretty well they can walk very fast second day onwards this cat can walk only so um, this is a plate uh, pin combination we have put and these are robust kind of uh, uh, implants where they can do very well in these cases um, lots of cases they get uh, a fracture inside the joint so you can see this is the joint which is got affected and there's a bad fracture inside there are four five pieces in this case and uh, we have to put uh, one screw here and then both the side plate and few wires and all but even in this bad fracture also can be rectified with the plating and all and in these cases also we don't recommend even putting a cast for one or two days more than one or two days so we put a bandage for one or two days and then third day cat can start walking in these kind of cases also and they do pretty well in these cases another cat which is having both the leg fractures we have done a um, pinning plating where we have put a pin then few wires here and then one plate also and this cat also was walking within two days a few another cases are there where um, we have done the surgeries and they are, they do pretty well after surgery so uh, coming to the uh, complications of uh, surgeries also so even it's not that uh, um, we do the orthopedic surgery everything is fine but uh, we do get uh, complication when we do the surgery whether it's uh, in terms of uh, the implant failure sometimes the screws comes out they get loosened they get infection there are soft tissue injury also possible the being cat skin is so thin and so soft so sometimes the implant can irritate the skin and the skin get um, uh, injuries and all and it doesn't heal again again injury keep happening and neurological injuries so especially when we do the surgery in front leg uh, um, upper bones and uh, in the pelvic area and even in the uh, spinal uh, fracture cases and all lots of cases they um, tends to get injury in the neural nerves and all and then the neurologically they may uh, be compromised uh, these patients so these are the uh, basic uh, uh, things what we uh, do in these cases how we deal with these cases so um, i think uh, this is all about uh, basic orthopedic because it's a huge field i can't uh, uh, finish in 15 20 minutes everything it's very difficult so probably i may expect some questions which i can answer and then probably i can help you if you have some something like this so um, I think this is about all orthopedic in cats.
thank you thank you sir yes sir so i think it was a fantastic session and uh, a lot of things you know even for vets it would be beneficial if they, uh, they uh, because as you said um, in a in a sparsely populated places um, unfortunately our vets don't get hands on experience with cats uh, yeah that's, that's that's an issue uh, unlike dogs that you know every day they will have at least 5 7 10 dogs walking in in their opd so yeah, yeah. it's, it's the, very important yeah yeah right uh, so there is one uh, question uh, i think uh, people appreciated the program also um, they were like uh, uh, and then there is this question which says that what immediate home remedy uh, we can give to cats if they fall from height and is it in, uh, it's in pain uh, having difficulty to breathe uh, and you know he has asked for home remedy for emergency situation where the veterinary help is not available at all so in these cases first what we need to do is don't try to handle the cat uh, directly just keep uh, the cat in a small uh, cage or small area where uh, the cat should not be able to move too much because moment again increase the pain as they move the bone will move and again pain will happen then try to uh, give them some water or probably some food just so, so that they, they can forget about those things sometimes that happens like they'll start licking their food or some gravy and all and then they'll start getting calm down with that right. provide some water and then in terms of medic medicines there are um, painkillers which uh, probably i can advise is a meloxicam syrup comes or even in human one tablet come meloxicam which is um, i think 7 7.5 mg tablet meloxicam which can be given um, for a 5 kg body weight uh, cat uh, one sixth tablet can be given uh, for a 4, four kg uh, body uh, body weight cat so but thing is these giving medication immediately is not uh, feasible because cat doesn't allow for us to give anything so i always advise to let the cat settle down let the the shock condition comes down there's a shock uh, condition is there for the cat and lots of lots of times you are not immediately uh, dealing with that condition because it's not that in, in front of you cat has fallen there is possibility that cat has fallen one hour before two hours before also and they get settled down so let them feel that okay you are with them just keep stroking them keep feeling make, make them feel that okay you are there and you'll able to take care now don't worry that will make them calm down and then probably you can like if you don't have access directly veterinarian but the cat's condition is difficult to manage at home at least once you need to take uh, the cat to the some hospital some maybe some basic hospital where at least one x-ray can be done you you should know that what injury kind of injury which is there and whether you can manage it with the management or not that is important so this meloxicam tablet one six tablet for four kg body weight can be given once in a day for one two to three days yeah right sir thank you thank you for answering that question uh, because there's a lot of uh, problems similar to these uh, people don't understand and sometimes due to mishandling uh, i think it 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 um, makes even the situation worse uh, for the yeah, doctors yeah. so can you please give an example or you know something like that you know what from the cat owner's perspective if there is a situation like these you know uh, first of all you know uh, as you said that you know you need to talk to the cat make sure that you know the stress levels are maintained and they are now confident that they are not alone and somebody that they know is there to rescue them um, and also you know uh, forget about cat the cat owner panics like anything you know they will, they will yeah that is important so out. they have to calm down they will freak out you know they will themselves freak out uh, that you know and, and in that uh, haste they will try to, to do something good to the cat but they end up you know making the condition even worse so what would you recommend in this situation you know how a cat owner should manage this situation so as i told you just in case if cat is not having some severe respiratory distress let the cat settle down let the give the time to the cat only in a cage you can keep or in a basket or a small area and just cover her a little bit if she allows us to do that but don't try to do against the cat and in case if you we suspect that okay cat is not able to use the hind leg she is dragging herself don't try to handle more because more handling will damage the spinal cord more okay. um yeah and just see whether uh, any anywhere they are able to see any bleeding bleeding also so lots of times uh, there will be damage to the internal organs and especially in the um, in the bladder so they may see a leaking some blood from the urine area or 
there is bleeding from the nose nose area and all for any of these conditions owner will not be able to do too much so they have to just give a little time for the cat to settle down in cat their their basic healing process is very fast they start getting better faster actually than the other creatures the dog and all so in case if you don't have option of the vet at least 2 3 hours let the cat settles down in case if it is not emergency situation and then you will able to realize okay she is using her mouth properly you are able to open her mouth then okay she is able to allow me to hold the front leg so that means front leg doesn't have any problem then probably you can go to towards the back leg because front leg still cat can allow you sometimes back leg whenever you go they'll try to react with that so it's a step by step procedure you do just see whether she is able to move her tail or not so first let us stabilize then check one one part head part you need to see first then front leg go back slowly and especially in the cases of uh, dog bites dog bites will be outside you will see dog bites like 5% and 99% 95% will be inside injuries so especially in dog bite cases don't assume that oh outside there's no, there's no bleeding and also there's no injury so what happen in dog bite cases the teeth will not be able to pierce the skin but it will be able to pierce the inside organs okay uh, so what happens we will think that okay there are not much injuries but there are severe injuries are there always when any ca cat comes with a dog bite no we shave the cat completely to see what areas where which we are not able to see also okay. <coughs> so we need to approach different way also like uh, we get uh, lots of cat with the electrocution so okay. when electrocution happens in cat uh, they will not show uh, first day any symptoms of much burn and all after 3 days you will see the all the pores are burned the first day you are able to see only burn on the some hairs and all but later on there will be uh, all the pores burns there will be uh, one ear will be having necrosis so some of these these cases will able to know slowly slowly what is the actual problem so always there are hidden uh, injuries also there that's which right. needs to be uh, addressed later on or maybe same time also right and there's a one there's, there's one amazing point that you mentioned i would like to repeat for our audiences that in situation like these like you know as you said that uh, if it is in case there is a spinal cord injury uh, uh, you need to handle a minimum you know uh, so in this situation you mentioned in your slides that you know use the the baskets uh, they are yeah. more comfortable in the baskets so uh, maybe they will get more secured you know, yeah yeah we'll be holding it that their body weight can go against their injury something like right, that right. Mm -hmm. uh, when we use the basket they are in much more better position than what we are holding it and running it to the vet okay yes, so yes. Think, you know carrying it uh, in 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 the in the always carry in the yeah yeah always, always carry in the basket yeah always carry in basket or case don't carry in the hand actually that's exactly. a more detrimental for them yeah it's very difficult always yeah right i i told you sir you know cats owner uh, cat owners they will like it's it's a love for the animal but sometimes it goes against them because they will be so panicked in that situation themselves yes yes they yeah, need yeah. to be taken care of rather than the cat so that's yes, how it happens yes. right sir and and um, sometimes you know it has been seen in in cats that you know they would be having a bit of twisted neck you know and then the neck twist will go to to a certain level and then again it comes back but it doesn't come back to the normal position so it is it something to do with the injury or something like that so so in case if there is a head trauma they may show the signs of head tilting so there is a um, they always is associated with the mostly the neurological problem where there is a trauma to the head and they are showing all these neurological signs of tilting the head uh, to one side or sometime you will see the eye moments different eye moments the pupil size will be different uh, in most of the uh, brain injuries if uh, the side which is uh, get affected in the brain the pupil will get constricted so in case if you um, examine the eye initially when the any injury happens especially in the head area if you see both the eyes you will see a uh, two different uh, uh, pupil size so then you know that okay there is a injury to the uh, head area also so you, you you can predict with that also right 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 
So I think, sir, you have by and large covered almost um, everything that you know one, that one should take care and how you should go around with the diagnosis also. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I always say in various forums that uh, diagnosis of cats is supposed to be the toughest in animal kingdom. And uh, yeah. you guys are doing a fantastic job. Uh, just diagnosis is something, uh, even, even in last to last session, I think when uh, Dr. Kunal was here uh, from Maxwell, he mentioned doctor ka kaam diagnosis karna hota hai. Yeah, yeah. Ko Google mein jati hai. You know, mm. <laughs> he was so it's jolly about it. Yeah. yeah, that's simple as that because, you know, diagnosis is very important and uh, that's, that's the biggest challenge uh, when it comes to felines uh, for our uh, vets. Um, thank you. Thank you once again, sir. And uh, as I said, that um, we would be trying doing more of the sessions uh, with you because this is something which is uh, really a gray area and people don't know how to react in this situation. Uh, forget about the after effects and you know uh, the care and the yeah, yeah. you know the immediate reaction what to the injury is something that we don't know so uh, you know thank you sir and you know i would also like to thank uh, professor uh, utpal tatu uh, because uh, he was the one who thought that you know this is the topic and um, the, this is the, an expert that should come together to make this uh, as as you know the, as a successful uh, learning experience for our cat owners no problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you for inviting me also because I'm not used to, I'm good worker, but may not be a good speaker. So probably I'll try to make it uh, more interactive uh, in, because may, may, I'm not uh, uh, in presentation, I'm not to be so good also, but I'll try my best to give the audience what they uh, they, they look for. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, for sir, it. If you ask my opinion, you did a fantastic job. It doesn't seem that you don't talk often. It's like, you know, you are regular in no. delivering lectures no. online. Uh, you know, no. Very, very, very frankly, I would tell you. So thank yeah. you, sir. Please give our regards okay. to your team and Dr. Pawan. And uh, thank you from whole Feline Club of India. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, cat owners. And uh, next week, we'll be back again with uh, another some interesting topic uh, to improve our learning and understanding this beautiful creature. Uh, till then, thank you. Be safe. And uh, happy cat keeping to all of you. Thank you.